how does God want us to let the people of other faiths? Well, uh, from a Muslim point of view, uh, God wants us to relate to people in general, regardless of their faith, to be good to others. There's a lot of emphasis in the Quran uh, and in the Hadith, the statements of the Prophet. One that comes to mind is the Hadith where he says, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamhumu rahman irham man fil arud yarham man fil sama, which means the most merciful God, the most merciful among you, God will be merciful upon them. So be kind and compassionate to those on earth. The one who's in heaven will be kind and compassionate towards you. Try to hear from the Christian their side of the story, how they view their own faith, and try to understand that as the, uh, as the basis of, uh, of a good relationship. What does it say in the Quran about relating to our faith? Uh, there are so many examples. Um, the, the relationship between the prophet and people of other faith continue to change. So there were times when, from the example of the prophet, we see uh, very examples of very good conduct. One good example is when in, in the collections of statements of the prophet called the Hadith, uh, the collection of al-Bukhari, where uh, a, a Jewish f funeral was passing by, and then the prophet stood up in respect, and his companions or his followers asked him, why are you standing up, uh, or should you stand up for a funeral of a Jew? And he asked them, is he not a human being? When he moved into Medina, he signed a document which became known as the Medina Charter, uh, the, some refer to it as the Constitution of Medina, uh, which, which he spelled out or provided a code of conduct between the Muslims and the Jewish tribes, the three Jewish tribes of Medina. And he described uh, that community of Medina as an ummah, uh, as one ummah, meaning Muslims were an ummah together with these uh, Jewish and Christian tribes I in Medina. What were the specific examples in the Quran about how to deal with other faiths? The, the verse that uh, every Muslim know, la ikraha fi din, there is no compulsion in religion, that a Muslim is not expected to force others to abide by the principles or teachings of, of Islam. And then again, we see that in the lifetime of the Prophet, there is an incident when a Christian delegation came to visit the Prophet, and they engaged in heated discussion and debate of uh, matters relating to theology. Uh, it took a number of days, and uh, you know, when it was on a Sunday, the Prophet uh, allowed them to make use of the mosque for their, for their worship. And we know that that worship uh, included, uh, you know, the, the Trinity and, uh, and things like that. And it, it, it was never an issue, really. But there are also cases uh, in the history uh, of the Prophet where the relationships were not always good. When the Prophet had uh, those moments when he had very positive encounters with the religious other, with other people or people from other faith, you find verses reflecting that very positive encounter. And uh, when in, in moments of war and conflict, you also find verses that reflect that. Uh, a, a good example of a, what you might call a positive verse is where the Quran states that say whoever is uh, who's Jewish or whoever is a believer or Christian and the Serbians, whoever believes in God and do righteous deeds, these they shall be no grieve upon them, and they will uh, they, they will not be grieved. Each religious just tradition has uh, difficult uh, passages or problem texts. Uh, you find those in the Bible. Uh, you find those in the Quran. In any other religious tradition, uh, for Muslims, uh, the verse that comes to mind, which is often quoted out of context, is um, "Slay the mushrikeen or the infidels wherever you find them." Um, uh, you, you'll see this verse on a number of websites, uh, you know, particularly uh, belonging to those groups who would like to wage some kind of war against anyone who is not Muslim. It is a verse that raises a number of questions. Uh, I've read it to you in English, but in its original Arabic, there are words that can be underlined. Uh, the word that is often translated as infidels, and in that passage it is mushrikeen, uh, which literally means as associating partners with God. But then again, it is, as we see throughout the Quran, when it is employed, it is not only referring to people who associate partners with God, it is referring to the Quraysh tribes of Mecca, uh, 
who were at that time involved, actively involved in a war against the prophet. And at the time when the prophet had formed an alliance with Jews and Christians of Medina fighting against the same uh, Quraysh tribes. So it is therefore we see used in the Quran as a, you could call it maybe an ideological term, not necessarily a theological term. We've got so many wars at the moment taking place and uh, most of those wars involve say Muslim countries. And obviously Muslims feel uh, you know, under siege and, uh, and they feel persecuted, they feel victimized. So the danger there is that the current uh, crisis and conflict provide a context in which uh, young Muslims read the Quran. So if they read the Quran during our time now, they read those verses that appear to be very negative when they speak about other religions. They may find those verses to be true, uh, and speaking the, the truth to them about the condition they find themselves in. So it's important for us to ensure that we remove and eradicate the such context which can lead to such uh, exclusivist ways of reading our religious texts. In our communities today, if we are having tension and conflict elsewhere, and then at the same time we have people uh, doing good work, uh, if they are Jews, Christians, and Muslims working together, then it, it is an example for many people that, well, maybe we don't need to look at Jews and Christians through the prism of war and conflict, that we can do you know, other things you know, as well. And that you know the fact that there is a problem in the in in, in between the Israelis and the Palestinians doesn't mean that that becomes the, the defining fact of our relationships here in the UK. We can have uh, a relationships that is beyond the the, the con that looks at things beyond the conflict. Religion uh, is a solution to the problems we are facing today uh, it's not i don't believe it's, it's i don't believe it's a cause of the problem it is it can be a very effective solution